Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, the number of the smallest unoccupied chair. The idea is that we're actually given a bunch of intervals. And so each of these intervals has a two values. So just looking at the first example, this is one interval. The first value indicates the arrival time, or I like to think of it as like the start time, but it's the arrival time where like each of these intervals corresponds to a person and that person arrives at, I guess, like this party or whatever at this time, time one, and then they leave at time four. So that's the leave time. If this is the first person that arrives, they are going to be assigned to chair equals zero. If this is the second person that arrives, they are going to be assigned to chair equals one. And I'll actually draw this up above. So this is zero, this is one, and then you might think that, okay, this is the third person that arrives at time four, so they must get chair two. No, actually, because this person left at time four, this person arrived at time four, so what do we do? Well, if this was time five, it would be pretty straightforward. This chair is now available, and so instead of giving this person chair two, we're always gonna give them the smallest number chair that we possibly can. So if chair zero is available now, one is still occupied. Actually, I guess one is available too at time three, but this one's also available now. So the smallest chair will go to this person. Now, if there's a tie, if this person leaves at time four, this person arrives at time four, we can assume that that swap is instant. That's what they uh, tell us uh, right over here. And we can assume that that chair is free in time for that person to use it. The idea here is that the chairs that were given, the way they word it is actually kind of confusing. I mean, if we have three people, zero, one, two, why would we need more than three chairs? Even if all of these people arrive at the same time, they'll have a chair for each of them. But the problem description says that we actually have an infinite number of chairs numbered from zero to infinity. Believe it or not, I actually didn't catch that. I didn't make like the jump that we actually don't need an infinite number of chairs. And I still solved the problem without the assumption that we only need three chairs. But that solution is slightly more complicated, even though it's the same like time complexity. So I will favor the slightly more simple solution. So let's assume that we only have three chairs and all three of them are available. Zero, one, two, all of them are available. The brute force solution would be relatively simple. And before I get into it, I guess I should explain what we are trying to solve because it's not just a simulation. We are actually given a second parameter as well. So that is in this case, the target friend. So it's one and it corresponds to the index in this array. So specifically, we want to know this person, which chair are they going to be assigned? It's one in this example, kind of like how we went over, but let's figure out an algorithm to determine how we can get there. Of course, we would want to go through these people in sorted order based on the arrival time. We don't care so much about the leave time. We want to go through them sorted order based on the arrival time. In this example, they're actually ordered for us, which makes things simple. But imagine if that wasn't the case, we might have to sort this array. Now, if we sort the array, then we lose the original index that each time was at. So the easiest thing to do, at least in Python, you can just, to each of these, add the index of each. So that's pretty easy to do. And then you can still sort them based on the first value using that as the sort key. Now, alternatively, you could also just create an array of the indexes. So here we have zero, one, two, and then sort these indexes, not by the index, but the key like here. So you don't modify the original array, but you take these indexes and you sort them based on the corresponding start time of each index. And then, you know, you might end up with something like this. From here, you can easily map to uh, the other arrival and uh, leave times. I guess I might actually do it this way just because that solution is easier to translate into other languages. So maybe some of you might appreciate that, some of you Java folks. But okay, enough of all that. Let's just kind of assume that for each of these, we have the arrival time, the leave time, and the index. And we can go through these in sorted order. That's not really the hard part. It is, of course, going to be n log n. So let's keep that in mind. Now, moving on to this part. These are the available chairs. 
And among them, we always want to pick the smallest one. So which data structure do you think is going to allow us to do that? Because it could be changing. Like for example, like here, we might remove this. This chair is no longer available. Then we might remove this. It's no longer available. And then maybe this uh, one becomes free. Like at time three, this one becomes free. So then it would be available again. And then we need to figure out what's the minimum. Or maybe this one stays occupied, but this one becomes free. So you can see how this can kind of become disjointed. It can become non-contiguous. So a heap is a very easy way to just get the minimum from that and also to pop the minimum. Now, if a chair is being used, we don't care so much about like the chair number. I mean, we do, of course, but we mainly care about what time is that used chair going to be free? Because that's another aspect of sorting that we kind of have to account for. So suppose we're going through this in sorted order. We're here, arrival time of one, this chair is occupied. We're here, arrival time of two, this chair is occupied. I mean, that's the solution. So at this point we'd be done, but let's just continue with the simulation. We get to here, we're at four. So should we give it the smallest chair from here? Not necessarily. It's possible that now that it's time four, that some of these possibly can be freed. So how would we do that? Well, assuming we stored these in a separate data structure used where we definitely store the leave time of each. So four is the leave time and the chair that that corresponds to was zero. So that's one chair over here. This had a leave time of three and the chair that it corresponded to was one. So this is what we would do. We're at time four right now. Are there any chairs that are available by time four that are currently being used? How would we do it? Well, we'd probably want to look at the minimum one. We'd start there. So either we'd want this to be sorted or possibly we'd also want it to be a heap, a minimum heap. So we would use the leave time as the sort key. So we'd see, okay, this is available at time three. It's currently time four. Therefore, this is actually available now. So I'm going to get rid of it from the used heap and it's gonna be available here now again. So I'm not able to draw this super well, but this is kind of what it would be. We're not just gonna do that like in an if statement, we're actually gonna use a loop to do that because it could be possible that multiple chairs could be now available, and that's exactly the case. So the condition we would do is compare the first value in these tuples and compare it with a less than or equal to the arrival time of the current person because even if they're equal that means this chair is now free so same thing here this would be popped from the second heap and therefore both of these chairs would be available this is what the available heap would look like and we'd pop the minimum it's zero so this person would get assigned a chair of zero and now we're pretty much done with this entire thing so that's the idea this is a two heap problem it's not like a traditional two heap problem the first heap is using the chair as the key, whereas the second heap is using the leave time as the heap, but it also does store the chair as well. So I think some of these details might be more clear when we actually code this up. So let's do that now. And uh, by the way, the time complexity to briefly discuss, clearly it's going to be O of n space due to these data structures and possibly from the sorting as well. But the time complexity is going to be n log n just because pushing and popping from a heap is a log n operation and we might do that for every single input which is of size n so that's how i'm getting this time complexity so the first thing i'm gonna do is actually use something called list comprehension i'm gonna create a new array using this times array so i'm gonna say for t in times but i'm not just gonna do that i'm actually going to enumerate this because that's going to give me access to the index and the time at the same like time no pun intended and by the way if these uh, details are new to you you might be interested in my python for coding interviews course on neat code io so we're creating a new array and so for each array we want to have a tuple of three values the beginning time the arrival time which is going to go first the leave time which is going to go next and lastly the index I'm going to take this and actually reassign it to the input array because we're no longer going to need the input array anymore. For the record, this is actually not modifying the input array. It's creating a new array and just reassigning the variable. I could have done the same thing. Like I could have updated the array itself, just appended the index to each of the sublists, but it's generally not good to update inputs. So that's why I'm not doing that. 
Now I'm going to run the built-in sort on this, which will use the first item of the tuple. And then I'm going to have those two heaps I was talking about. In Python, you can actually just declare a heap using an array, because that's how they're kind of built under the hood. So I'm going to have one for used chairs, and it's going to store the leave time of that chair and the chair itself. And I'm also going to have available chairs, which is just going to store the chair itself, not in a tuple, um, just the chair. So we can actually populate that initially by setting it just to the length of this and zero through n minus one. So in Python, once again, you can use list comprehension for that. So for i in range length of times, I'm going to set i as the value. So this will populate this array from zero to n minus one. And now it's time to actually go through these in sorted order. So let's do that. So for this in times it's three values here, the arrival time, we're going to unpack that, the leave time, and the index. We're going to unpack all three at the same time. And what we want to do is from the available chairs, we want to pop from that heap. So something like this, and then the result would be the chair. And then this chair would now, of course, be used. So we'd say heap Q dot heap push to the used chairs, this tuple, not just the chair itself, but also the leave time of the current person who's occupying that chair. So that's going to go first because that's the key, the leave time. And this seems perfectly valid. There's one thing we did not do, though. One thing we forgot before we get the next available chair for the current person, there might be some chairs that are actually newly available. So while the used chair heap is non-empty and at the top of the used chair heap, which we can get at index zero and that heap has a pair of values, the leave time and the chair. We want the leave time. So we're going to do index zero of that pair. While the smallest leave time that we have is less than or possibly equal to the arrival time of the current person, well, that means that that chair is actually available now. So what should we do? Well, we should say heap Q, heap pop from the used chair. It's going to pop that exact value at the top of the heap. We'll set that equal to uh, the chair and it's going to pop two values. So let's do leave and chair. We only care about the chair though. And then we're going to say heap Q, heap push to the available heap, the chair itself, because that heap only stores a single value. And it's actually called available chairs. This should be called chairs as well. So I'm very inconsistent with my naming. I'm sorry about that. I'll fix this. But anyways, we're getting very, very close. The only thing is, how exactly do we return the result? How do we know when we've reached the target friend? Well, we can just have an if statement for that. Once we know which chair that person is going to be assigned, at this point, I'll put it actually after just for readability. If I is equal to the target friend, if we've reached them, then we know which chair they were assigned right now. So let's just go ahead and return that chair. We don't really need to have anything down here. Like we don't really need a default value just because it's guaranteed that the target friend is going to be a valid index within this array. And we're guaranteed to be able to give each person a chair. So this solution should always execute given the constraints of the problem. Let's run it now. And as you can see, it works and it's efficient. One thing I do want to try, though, is instead of having this kind of shortcut where we have an array of three values, I feel like that's kind of cheating. I'm going to have indexes of the people and I'm going to do I for I in range length of time. So this will create an array from zero to N minus one. We have all the indexes and we want to, let's say, sort the indexes, but we want a custom sort. We want to sort by something. And this is just an inline function, by the way. So the sorting key is going to be this function, which is going to take each index. Let's call that I. It's not going to sort based on I. It's actually going to sort based on the start time of that person. So we're going to say times at index I, and then we're going to get the start time by index zero. So now that we have that, we can go through the indexes in sorted order. So let's say for I in range or sorry, not in range in indexes that and then I'm using the variables A for arrival time and L for leave time. So I'm going to set A L equal to times at that index. I'm hoping that this is going to work. So let's give it a shot. Let's see. Yep. So this one works as well. So this is kind of just removing the need for having like a tuple. 
this should be doable, I believe, in most languages. Most languages allow you to provide like a custom sort key. It might be more verbose than this. I know Java kind of makes it more annoying. I guess now the only thing left would be this heap, how we have a tuple being added to it. I'm not sure if Python has a way to provide a custom key to a heap, but I do know that most languages probably do. I think Java does. And in that case, if you wanted to not use a tuple for that heap, you could probably just add the chair and then find some way to map the chair to its leave time, but not 100% sure how to do that off the top of my head. But anyways, if you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.